One way to do it, very simple, you go from 20, 20, then you do 20 morning, 15 in the afternoon, wait one week, then 15, 15, wait another week, then 10, 15, I mean 15, 10, 15 in the morning, 10, and you go by five milligrams every week until off. If you're trying to do it faster than that, then you have uh, incidents again very quick, and then they become, then you see patients, use two weeks in medication, you're trying to win a little faster, they start bleeding again. So the best way to do it is to keep it for a little bit, cool off them in the inflammation, and then wean it very slow. Then uh, we have a, compare budesonide with um, the mesalamine, mesalacin, or fi, uh, amino salicylate. Budesonide is better. But the problem with budesonide, budesonide is just an esteroid that is just released in the terminal ileum. If you he has a really high uh, metabolism by the liver, and then if he's released higher, he's going to be completely destroyed. So basically, it's used at the terminal lithium. It really, uh, the liver over there is better than mesalamine. But there are diseases above, there are diseases below, and it's very hard to do. And then just for one specific type of disease, it's better than, than, than mesalamine, but uh, definitely I will probably keep it for one specific disease, terminal ileal disease. Other than that, no, not really point. Then immunosuppressant, we talk about the, uh, ya, just when you start seeing severe cases, you start to do uh, satioprine and 6MP uh, purinetol and the other medication, metrotexate, cyclosporine, tacrolimus. And then this, I put it there, but uh, it's antibiotic, metronidazole. Metronidazole is very good. It controls the inflammation and also clean the bowel. When you do that, the inflammation goes away. And sometimes you use metronidazole by themselves, and then they keep the kid under control. So, and then we know it's a, it's a nitronidazole, they have an immunomodulator effect, and also the antibiotic effect, and it's very good. But uh, the purinetol, I, I need to tell you something. I have a patient, they have ulcerative colitis. Beautiful family. And then uh, he used to be very compliant, super compliant, very educated family. And then one day the, the symptoms continue, he got to stress, he was eating something that he shouldn't, he had a few allergies, we removed it, but he continued breaking down his diet, and then continue having the symptoms. What happened, we went from, from pentasa, esteroid, antibiotic, and then we are here. What should we do? We put it on purinetol. Purinetol is a good medication that sometimes you need to use it. Esteroid is a fantastic medication with too many side effects. And then what happens is you keep esteroid for a long time, you tend to have the hypertension, cataract, and all these complications, diabetes, all these problems. And then what happens, purinetol is the only medication, this combination, that allows you to stop the esteroid and continue remission. So you use pulsated esteroid when you use it. So we start to introduce purinetol while he was an esteroid, and then he, had, he went to a pharmacy. And in the pharmacy, the pharmacy, pharmacist, just make a simple comment. Why are you using this medication that we use for cancer patients? Guess what? We lost the credibility. We lost the patient. The mother didn't want to stop everything. So she was an asteroid. She was bleeding. So what happened? Toxic megacolon, perforation, everything. And then uh, even though we're trying to tell, uh, trying to explain, give her information, data, information, educating the patient, for her, the pharmacist was God. And then she started she start completing the medication and she started going to Sun Harbor. And then she started using these uh, yogurts and using these um, lactobacillus and aloe vera. So, I mean, I'm telling you, just a simple comment from the pharmacist, even though you have a really good relationship, we're talking was more than six months or even a year. Just a simple comment. Blew the patient. And then what happened? You're gonna have chances to have more complicated disease, complication after that. Have gonna have hard time to get in another gastroenterologist to believe. But if she look into the data, it's just in the middle. I mean, sorry about that. Right. Let me get back real quick. I did that on purpose. <laughs> So well, what I was saying is basically you have to be careful even though you, you do the best you can, but uh, sometimes the pharmacy is trying to help you too much and make things worse. And we, tend to, we deal with this all the time. And then uh, it's just a problem because this is a really liable patient. 
I mean, this is no somebody just uh, make a mistake, change from lactulos to crystalos. I mean, it's it, it just something complicated, no? And then uh, <laughs> in Fleximab, if you're having these uh, more severe cases, then you start to e war, making things worse, I mean, then you go to more severe immunosuppressor. In Fleximab, the first one, when you have humanized, and the fact that you go from uh, chimeric to humanized increase tenfold the price. For 4,000 4, go to probably 15,000, I mean 20,000 infusion, right? So it's very expensive. And then uh, removing the white blood cell to control the inflammation using the probiotic and, and, and also some uh, parasite has been used to modify the flora and maintain remission. Trichuri suite, so we doing uh, infusion of trichuri suite. Then uh, other medication that has been studied is aloe vera. No, it's a medication, it's a remedy, and people claim they make it better. But the, the real thing is, it's not treatment. It has been associated in a group of studies that has been keeping the remission of the patient take it without producing major diseases. But at treatise alone, it hasn't been treating ulcerative colitis. So, I mean, when you see, go review internet or you go to anybody, uh, naturist, and they say, aloe vera, go to there. So you have to really teach your family, your patient, that, I mean, it's not, that's not the right treatment. And then finally, uh, if nothing works and the patient continue and continue having this inflammation, finally surgical colectomy, I, most of the time it's just uh, the resol resolution of the disease and the problem. And then once you remove the colon, if there is no colon, if everything is limited to the colon, then the symptoms resolve. And then uh, once it resolves, the chances to have cancer, perforation, and all these weird complications disappear. There is a still problem with the extra intestinal manifestation, but uh, not as frequent af after you remove the colon. And thank you very much. Question for me? <laughs>